To me, I mean, to, to, to live is for myself. To live is for what I want. And to die is terrible. No, Paul understood this. He realized to live is Christ. Is that our main focus? Is that our being? Are we of singleness of mind? That's where true joy is when we say to live is for Jesus Christ. I believe Paul was confident, don't you? I believe he, he understood that God was in control no matter what part of life he was at, whether he was bound or where he's free, whether he was rich or whether he was poor. You know what he said? In whatever state I'm in, he said, I've learned to be content and knowing this, that God had a purpose. God's got a purpose. You know, I believe that in my life and your life. And that's where I find my victory. That's where I find joy. There is where I find my confidence. He says, for me to live is Christ. Listen, if you're not ready to die, friend, you're a man most miserable. Yes, yes. You, you don't know. You're not ready to live if you're ready to die. Amen. And the Bible says to find life, we've got to lose out. And there are people in this life that's amazing to me. You know, that, they, uh, that, that they, they're trying to grab a hold of all they can, feeling that that's going to give them happiness. You know what? Uh, it's been said there, and I know you've, you've heard this many, many times. When, the, when old Ben Rockefeller died, they want to know how much he left behind. Somebody said he left every bit of it behind. Yeah. Money's not going to make you happy. Amen. Amen. And in the face of death, the only joy you can have is to know that it is gain. Amen. Amen. That's how I know that, uh, you know, I can let my loved ones slip on out of here if they're saved and they're right with God. But I'm going to see them again, and the best is yet before them. Amen. You know, death, and Paul doesn't talk about dying here. He talks about departing, and, and that's what he goes on to say, that, that he was in a, uh, you know, I'm in a narrow place is what the idea is. I, I'm in a narrow place. He said, I want to go home and be with the Lord, but, you know, Nevertheless, God's got a plan for my life, and it is that you might benefit. You know, how many people are benefiting from our life and our testimony? You know, how many people are following in our pathway and in our tracks? How many people are watching us? And let me say, there are many more watching you than you think. Yes, sir. There are people that are watching us. How do we stand up under chains? How do we stand under the bond? You know, I think that there's three things that we need to know here that Paul had confidence in. Paul said in verse number 19, he says, For I know this, so I turn to my salvation, for my deliverance. He says, through your prayer. You know, I believe Paul had confidence in prayer. I believe Paul had the confidence of the prayer of the saints. You know, I, I have confidence in your prayer. You know, I, I've got confidence that whatever I'm going through, I could I could come to some of you and, and, and tell you that I need you to pray for me. And I, I believe that you can you can ring the bells of heaven and get touch of the Lord and, and tell tell him what I'm going through. You know, Paul realized that I, I, I believe Paul was a confident man that there were people praying for him. You know, you can be confident in this one thing. But if one or two Touching and agreeing in one thing. The Bible says that God hears that. You know, I believe God has answered many of our prayers around here. Amen. And if we ask God, thy will be done. I believe God can give you the victory, whatever his will may be. You know, I've always said and I've always read, it's not always the greatest miracle that God has delivered you from your trial. Or maybe from whatever might be... Uh, Change in you that you feel that uh, uh, maybe uh, that, that has you down, that you can't have victory in Christ. You know, maybe the greatest victory is God not remove that chain, but that He be with you through that trial. That, that, that's a miracle to me, is how you can have joy in your circumstance, not from it. Amen. Whatever you think. And there he said there, not only that, but he said in the supply of the Spirit. There's three things that you can be confident in. It is the prayer of the saint. It's the provision of the Spirit. God will minister to you. God is the comforter through his Holy Spirit. And God will teach you. God will help you. The Bible says if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And the wisdom, wisdom is something that is often found in the midst of trials. And I believe he had confidence in Christ. 
I believe he had confidence in his Savior. Amen. You know the song says, if I go or if I stay, I'm a winner. Amen. Either way. Amen. Can you honestly say this morning as we fill in the blank, for me to live is what? <coughs> and to die. Or what he says here, for me to live is what? And to die <coughs> is what? <coughs> Paul said for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. If you've not met Christ, you're not ready to die. And I know there are times in our lives that we can't always say to live is Christ and to die is gain. I'm speaking from my heart. As, as I have gripped this passage of Scripture for the last few days and realized there are times that there are things that slip into my life. To lose focus. I can tell what you're focused on this morning and how critical you are. Paul didn't criticize, did he? I'm chained to a Roman soldier I can't witness. I, I, we don't find that Paul said he couldn't. But what he did say is, I can. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. For you to live is it Christ, to die is to gain. So, Trish, are you ready to get out of here today? No, I, I enjoy the life God's given me. Through the burdens and the trials, I've enjoyed life in the last six years or ten years of my life. There was a time that I was miserable, but in the will of God, I'm telling you, you know, you can have victory. Amen. Your circumstances don't have to change. You know, my joy is not dependent upon the Republican Party. Thank God. My joy is dependent upon one, Christ Jesus. And I'm, 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 I'm not headed for democracy. I'm headed for a theocracy. Yeah. Amen. I'm headed where Christ is the king. Amen. And he's in control. Listen, it's going to be a better day, friend. I'm glad to live his Christ. Paul said, if in this life our hope is in Christ, we're men most miserable. You think, well, what happens when you die? Well, most people don't realize this, but there's a soul that lives in here that's going to live somewhere forever. Because what Jesus did for me, I'm going to live forever with him. Why? Because I repented of my sin to receive the Lord Jesus. I want to ask you this morning, are we first focused on everything else that's going on around us? Are we focused on our difficulties? Or are we focused on what Jesus Christ is to us? He understood without the supply of the Spirit. There's no joy. There's no happiness. You know, that's what we need in our life today. Is we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. That wherever we go, that we can display and shine like Christ in the midst of difficulty. Could you? Things don't turn around, but Robert's going to give us a verse of song. Things don't turn around. Some of us may have to be changed. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What if, what if that's God's will, that you be, you be changed? You know, I, I thought about some things this week, and I'm not going to detail, but what if God has chosen you to be changed to that difficulty to win that son? To win that daughter. To win that wife, that husband. What if God chooses? You know, I got to thinking about, you know, when we really pray. You know, what, what if it, you know, I was thinking about a preacher. And Brother Kenny knows who I'm talking about. And I don't want to call him names. Think about a preacher and his son. I mean, a well-known preacher. He's got kids that are saved. And he's got one that's never been in church. And I know, and I, I've heard of stories how that man prays for that boy. And I got to thinking in my own life, you know, what if, what if, uh, what if I got to that place uh, that one of my children were out of church and not saved? You know, would I pray that prayer, God, whatever it takes to win that one to the Lord? What if it is a disease? What if it is devastation, a, a disaster? I mean, are we we willing to be chained to that necessary thing that they're going to win, or God's going to win their heart? 
Are we willing? I see a man here that was. And I see a man right here in my life that has a lot of improvement. Would we pray those kind of prayers? Whatever, Lord, in my life to win that husband. Whatever it might be to win that child. Lord, I know you can give me joy. But when it's all said and done, that is really all that matters is Jesus Christ. You know, well, that's a heavy burden to deal with. And a heavy thought to think that, Lord, whatever it might take, whatever it might take for others to see the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart, we're willing to be changed. Or can we say to live as Christ and to die as gain? Can we honestly say that again this morning? You know, we're we'll praying. Lord, help. Would you stand? 196. 196.